Will Avila get punch drunk on McGinnis? Will Canada be a winner for Witter? And Beer Bomb looks for a fancy 16th victory. This is the Fight Network's preview of The Fighters. Hey there, fight fans. My name is John Pollock, and welcome to the Fight Network's preview of the Fighters event coming up this Saturday night in Mississauga, Ontario. In addition to that, John Ramdean is going to be joining me as we preview the Strike Force Challenges 14 event this Friday night, headlined by Pat Healy taking on Lyle Beerbaum. But right now, we're going to take a look at the main event for this Saturday night in Mississauga, Ontario, as NABA lightweight champion Logan McGuinness makes his first championship title defense. The main event Saturday night will feature Orangeville, Ontario native and NABA lightweight champion Logan Cotton McGinnis making the first defense of his championship as the 13-0-1 23-year-old will defend against Hector Julio Avila, a challenger 15 years his senior. Avila comes into this fight with a record of 47-5 with 42 knockouts. NABA lightweight champion Logan Cotton McGinnis returns to the ring this Saturday night in his transplanted home of Mississauga, Ontario at the Hershey Center. This will be McGinnis's first defense of his title that he won last September when he stopped Buzz Grant to claim the vacant prize. Stepping up for the first opportunity at his championship is 38-year-old Hector Julio Avila, a veteran with a record of 47-5 with an impressive 42 knockouts on his resume. However, Avila does remain a bit of a mystery for the champion and his camp. We know his record, but we haven't seen any footage of him yet, so we haven't really prepared anything. I mean, he's a shorter guy, so typically we're going to stay on the outside, use my jab a lot, and, and more work on boxing. My last fight, uh, I did a lot of inside fighting and fighting with the guy. I, we're planning on um, boxing this fight a lot more. The guy's a lot shorter and he's coming up in weight. I mean, he has got a lot of knockouts. He's 47 and 5 with 42 knockouts. So, I mean, you got to respect the, the knockout ratio. You know, Logan is a, is a fighter. And uh, what we're doing this, for this training camp is we want him to utilize the jab. And, uh, you know, he, he likes to take uh, risk, a lot of risk. So, uh, when we fight this time, it's going to be calculated risk. We're going to use the jab. We're going to showcase uh, Logan's boxing abilities instead of, you know, just his fighter's ability. He likes to fight like Arturo Gaddy's and somewhat. But uh, um, we're going to box. We're definitely Definitely going to box behind the jab and throw combinations, and it'll be a good night. McGinnis returns to action following a strong performance last November in a non-title affair with the tough Adrian Verdugo, where McGinnis scored a unanimous decision victory, but felt his defense was abandoned at times during the fight. I've watched the fight a lot of times. Um, there was a lot of lot of stuff, especially my defense. I was just I was standing there a lot, and uh, I wasn't really rolling with shots. I kind of would just a couple times I just put put my hands up and was was sitting there. I mean, I got involved in the fight, right? The crowds there, they're yeah. cheering me on, my fans and family and everyone, and I want to put on a show every time out, right? But uh, I mean, it was a good good experience for me. I mean, there was a few rounds where I decided to box and move a bit more, and I and I, I took a lot less damage in those, those rounds, but. Uh, yeah, my, my, my hands too were a bit were bugging me going into that fight too, but I mean everything's 100% now, so I'm, I'm just ready to get back in there and, and uh, I'll do my last performance. I, I'd give it a B because like the first couple of rounds he went in there just to war. And uh, like I said, uh, I, Logan listens very well to me, so after I got into his butt, I told him, you know, I want you to box. He started to box and, you know, he, it was basically an eight-round shutout. You know, he, uh, Verdogo, any momentum Verdogo got, uh, Logan was able to take it away from him. So it was, it was a great performance for him. This Saturday night, McGinnis headlines once again at the Hershey Center, which has sold more than 4,000 tickets in a venue that has become his proving ground, and the champion wants to provide a show against Avila. A lot of fights have came out really fast. This, this fight we're planning on, because we haven't seen much of him yet, so we don't know exactly what to expect. So I'm going to go out and kind of feel him out, see what, what he has, and... Uh, if, if it turns into a fight, it turns into a fight. I mean, I just, I, but I want to showcase my, my talents this fight a, a bit more than I have in the past. In a welterweight bout for the vacant WBC International Silver Championship, 37-3 junior the hitter Witter will make his way from across the pond for only his fourth fight outside of the United Kingdom when he takes on 18-1 Victor Lupo, a native of Romania whose loan loss came to Paul Clavet in November of 2007. On Saturday night, Junior the Hitter Witter returns after a 17-month layoff and moves up to 147 pounds for his fight with Victor Lupo for the vacant WBC International Silver Welterweight Championship. Oh, it's, it's been brilliant. It really has been brilliant. It's, it's made it a lot easier. The diet side of it. Not the work side, because the work's still been very hard. Dom still push me. I mean, all kids in gym still trying to kill me. Training, I've sparred. Sparring's gone well. We've been, been over to Bolton in England, got up some sparring up there. We've had good kids in the gym like Kel Brook, um, kid called Kid Galilad, and I've been working hard, you know what I mean? So it's, a, it's mainly been getting fit, getting sharp, getting back to where I want to be, as I should be. Witter is entering this bout with losses in two of his last three fights to Timothy Bradley and Devin Alexander, the latter of which ended due to an elbow injury. 
I looked to them and there were things I did wrong in preparation for them fights. Um, mentally and physically, I took too much out of myself on the last fight. Um, mentally, I wasn't right for the Bradley fight. But now I'm, I'm fit and I'm ready and I'm just raring to go. It's not bothered me at all since I've been back in over the last couple of months. I think the time I had out right the, straight after that, I had a lot of time out that did me in, so I had about six months out of the gym completely. And I think that, that rest made it heal making weight out not being a problem, so everything's good. This bout goes down Saturday night at the Hershey Centre in Mississauga, but will we see Witter go back to 140 pounds to fight Amir Khan later this year? Not at all. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, it's not confirmed. It might, it might not happen. It probably won't happen. I'm not, I'm not bothered about that. Really, truly, what I'm really concentrating is winning this title on Saturday night. The card at the Hershey Centre will also feature Samuel Vargas looking to continue his undefeated mark and add the NABA Canadian welterweight gold to his resume when he takes on 6-3-4 and four Canadian Tibor Broche with the vacant title up for grabs. Broche has not tasted defeat since July of 2008. Rising welterweight Samuel Vargas will attempt to earn his first taste of gold this Saturday night in Mississauga when he meets the tough 6-3-4 Tabor Broche for the vacant NABA welterweight championship. In preparation for this battle, Vargas is not one to sugarcoat his assessment of the Mississauga native Broche. I just, I just think he's a dirty fighter. He just, he just comes in with his head, known, known for head, head bots, uh, comes in with the forearms, the elbows, so you just got to be careful with him. Just, uh, you, I'm just going to take care of fighting my fight and, you know, just, just punish him whenever I can. Despite a rocky 1-3-3 one, three, and three start to his career, Broche has settled down with strong performances, having gone 5-0-2 oh, since September of 2008, a streak not lost on Vargas's camp. I always say uh, pressure, pressure does one or two things. It uh, breaks pipes or builds diamonds, and we're in the diamond building business, so I mean, we don't feel no pressure. We, we just train and prepare for exactly what we need to do. Uh, T-Boy is a very tough fighter. He's been around a long time. And he's going on an eight-fight uh, winning streak. He's, uh, he's not lost in his last eight fights. So we do, we do have a tall order uh, uh, against us. But I, I truly believe I'd bet on my man anytime. You know, he's, uh, he's learning on the job. He's only had 14 amateur fights. So he's definitely learning on the job. To step in against somebody like T-Boy, I know that uh, Sammy has whatever it takes to win. He'll bring it out of himself. I mean, I've never seen uh, Sam looking this good. He just He's getting relaxed in there. He's looking like a, a seasoned veteran. And I mean, me and him do actually do lots of rounds. He's a bigger guy, but we do we do lots of rounds with each other. And uh, and even uh, even Sam, he, he's he's been changed. Like his body's been changing too. He's getting stronger. He's getting bigger. He's working with a, a strength conditioning coach, and he, he's changing great. And uh, I mean, I just I just don't see Tibor uh, being able to finish the fight with Sam. I think Sam. From what I've seen of Sammy, he looks great. In only his eighth professional bout, Vargas will look to take home gold and cement his stature as the top welterweight in Canada. It means a lot to me. It's very important, and I'm very excited. Um, definitely, that pushes me to work uh, to work a lot harder in the gym and the strength, my strength, my strength conditioning coach, working three times a day. You know, like, I'm, I'm more than confident and prepared for this fight. Like, I'm good. When we come back, it's a bantamweight title showdown at the Mandalay Bay Event Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we'll go one-on-one -on -one with Hennessy Sports' Adam Harris to chat about Saturday night's card in Mississauga, Ontario. Welcome back, everybody. We are now joined by Adam Harris of Hennessy Sports, who are putting together this Saturday's card at the Hershey Center. Adam, thanks for taking some time to join us. And first of all, what are ticket sales like thus far for Saturday night? Well, uh, John, ticket sales have been really, really brisk. Uh, I think it's an event that Ontario can really get behind, and it's, uh, I think it's marking sort of a, a change in the cards that are being presented here. I think it's set a new sort of standard. So, you know, the response has been fantastic. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt having such uh, great talent on the card, so we're, we're really excited. In the main event, we're going to see Logan McGinnis making his first defense of the NABA Lightweight Championship. He's going to be taking on Hector Julio Avila, a 38-year-old fighter, but with 42 knockouts. You know, he's a very dangerous fighter. Uh, he's very heavy-handed, so, you know, Logan being a young, uh, you know, sort of a young gun in the sport, we've got to be, um, you know, it's all about levels, and I think this is a perfect step-up fight for him where, you're going against youth against experience and uh, you know we expect a you know a very very tough fight for Logan uh, that said we think Logan's you know ready um, he's boxing very well and um, you know we think he's going to come come away with uh, another title defense what did you see in Logan's last fight we saw him back with Adrian Verdugo in November showing a lot of toughness uh, earning that eight round unanimous decision 
you, you know, Logan, Logan's an all-action fighter. Uh, sometimes I've, I've got my, you know, I'm pulling out my hair because I know he can make it an easy job for him. But, you know, that said, I think he's up for another great performance. You know, I, I'd like him to, to, to box and uh, obviously, you know, be defensively uh, sound and, of, you know, sort of move around a little bit and uh, pick his spots to fight in and tire out this older guy and then stop him in the later rounds. So we think it's going to be an exciting fight. Uh, our matchmakers are really excited about this one and it's going to be something that uh, I think the fans are going to enjoy. We're also going to see Junior Witter on the card Saturday night. Of course, he had two big fights with Devin Alexander and Timothy Bradley in two of his last three bouts. Tell us a bit about his opponent, Victor Lupo. Yeah, that's that's a fight that has all the ingredients for, you know, a, a classic. Uh, Witter, Witter, a former champion and Lupo, someone that's got, uh, you know, a good record but uh, hasn't fought, you know, the, the, the same sort of uh, fights that, that Witter has. So I think for for uh, Lupo, he needs to be really, really proactive and really, um, really take the fight to Witter. And, and uh, Witter has got a, you know, he's got a lot to prove right now. He's, he's on his, you know, he's moving up in the division and he's, you know, he's coming back. So, um, you know, we're happy to present this, you know, a former world champion fighting in Ontario a couple of years ago. If you would have told people that, I don't think they would have believed you. So now, uh, you know, we have to, we have to raise the bar here. And I think that's what people want to see. And we're looking to, you know, present a great card. And finally, Adam, the NABA Canadian Welterweight Championship is going to be decided. It's currently vacant. We're going to see the undefeated Samuel Vargas in action against Tibor Broch. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's great to have, you know, a bit of everything on the card. We've got some international flavor. And uh, to have a local punch-up like this is, is something that we're, you know, th that I think is key in, in developing the sport here. So, you know, Vargas and Bosch is, uh, is a fight that I've wanted to see for a while. Thanks very much, Adam, for the time. Quickly, where can viewers get tickets if they have not already gotten them? Uh, yeah, tickets are available through Ticketmaster. And uh, on the night, we've uh, released 500 premium seats for walk-up crowds. So, you know, just uh, don't miss it. On Saturday night in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Mandalay Bay Event Center will play host to a bantamweight war as 25-1 challenger Nonito Donaire will go after WBO and WBC champion Fernando Montiel, who will bring his 44-2-2 record into Vegas with everything on the line. We'll take a quick break, but when we return, it's a full preview of the Strikeforce Challenges 14 card, headlined by lightweights Pat Healy and Lyle Fancy Pants Beer Bomb. Strikeforce will present their 14th Challengers event this Friday night from Cedar Park, Texas, and will be headlined by lightweight action as undefeated 15-0 Lyle Fancy Pants Beer Bomb returns to the Strikeforce cage for the first time since May of last year when he meets veteran wrestler Pat Healy, who enters this contest with a record of 25-17 and with a 500 mark of 1-1 for the Strikeforce organization. Healy last fought in June of last year where he was submitted by former lightweight champion Josh the Punk Thompson. Ryan Couture makes his sophomore appearance Friday night as he takes on 2-0 Lee Higgins. Couture made an impressive pro debut last August, submitting Lucas Stark with a triangle choke, while Higgins had back-to-back -back fights in November and December of last year with two first-round submission victories. 14-2 Brian Travers will be in lightweight action this coming weekend as he takes on the 25-10-1 Carlo Prater, an eight-year veteran of the sport. Despite a resume with wins over Melvin Gillard, Spencer Fisher and Carlos Condit, Prater enters this fight having lost four of his last five as he seeks out a much-desired W. And the card rounds out with welterweight action as the 5-2 Ryan Larson will meet the returning 10-2 Eric Apple, who returns to the cage for the first time since November of 2009. Apple has a 1-1 one -one record with Strikeforce with a submission stoppage over Matt Mikowski in September of 2008, before losing via TKO to Bobby Volker in 2009. Larson has not been out of the first round since his debut fight back in February of 2006. Strikeforce provides fans with the 14th edition of their Challenger Series on Friday night, live from the Cedar Park Center in Cedar Park, Texas. In the night's main event, undefeated Washington native Lyle Beerbaum looks for his 16th straight win when he meets Team Quest Oregon lightweight Pat Healy. The 32-year-old Beerbaum, the subject of a documentary chronicling his addiction to methamphetamines before finding mixed martial arts, has finished 13 of his 15 opponents by both submission and TKO. Fancy Pants hold stoppage victories over UFC veterans Dwayne Bang Ludwig and BJJ black belt Rafaelo Oliveira, as well as a razor close split decision triumph over former BJJ world champion and Nova Uniao representative Vitor Shalin Hibero. Standing across the cage is the former MFC welterweight champion Pat Healy. The 27 year old UFC and IFL alum last saw action in June, where he lasted three rounds with former Strike Force lightweight champion Josh Thompson before falling victim to a rear naked choke. Over his 42-fight career, Bam Bam has defeated some of the best fighters the division has to offer, including Carlos Condit, Dan Hardy, and the hard-hitting Paul Daly. Although Beer Bomb may have an advantage on the ground, with 13 submissions of his own, Healy may be more than a handful if the fight goes to the mat. 
With an impressive showing, each man can climb the 155-pound ranks and throw their name into the title mix in the developing lightweight category. Also in action, Ryan Couture, son of MMA legend Randy Couture, steps back into the cage for a second time when he takes on lightweight Lee Higgins. In his debut, Couture showcased a dangerous ground game when he managed to lock in a slick triangle choke on his adversary, only 115 into the opening frame. Former WEC welterweight title challenger Carlo Prater steps into the cage to square off against Division I wrestling standout Brian Travers. In welterweight action, submission fighter Eric Apple looks to rebound from a loss to Bobby Volker after a more than a year layoff to challenge Ryan Larson. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, John Ramdeen, as we preview Strike Force Challenges 14 coming up this Friday from Cedar Park, Texas. And John, it's going to be headlined by the undefeated Lyle Beerbaum, taking on a very tough wrestler in Pat Healy. Yeah, I absolutely love this fight. This is great for the Strike Force Challenger series. Lyle Beerbaum, of course, wants to extend his winning streak, but he's facing such a durable, tough guy in Pat Healy, who uh, is going to be in tip top shape and is going to bring it to the submission specialist. Healy, of course, we last saw against Josh the Punk Thompson last year, probably the first time a larger audience has got to see this guy who I think has kind of gone under the radar for most of his career. Yeah, what's amazing is the guy was able to go three rounds with the former champion. So it, it really shows you what type of fighter this guy is. And I think Beer Bomb is going to have his hands full. Do you feel that Beer Bomb will improve to a fancy 16-0? Well, if the fight goes to the ground, maybe he can learn some things from his teammate, Cody McKenzie, yes. and go for the McKenzie team. But I highly doubt it. Uh, uh, Pat Healy, very, very durable, like I said before. Iron chin, great work ethic. And uh, I think this fight's going to come down to a split decision. And I'm going to say that Pat Healy hands Lyle Beerbaum his first loss. We're also going to see Ryan Couture in his second professional bout. He's taking on another undefeated fighter in 2-0, Lee Higgins. Obviously, with a last name like Couture, you're going to be pushed quicker than your, your skill set maybe is at times for Couture. Lots of pressure here on these strike force shows. Yeah, what's amazing about this guy, though, he is legit, and I mean, you say legit, this is only his second professional fight, but if you go back and you look at his first fight, very slick submission skills, and I think Strike Force has a, a great thing on their hands with Ryan Couture, as they do with a lot of their guys in the Challenger Series. It's really great for the fans to see these up-and-coming guys who can establish themselves and then make the jump to the bigger stage. Guys like uh, Tyron Woodley, Shane Del Rosario, and LeVar Big Johnson. Speaking of Del Rosario and Johnson, you were in New Jersey last weekend for the kickoff of the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix Tournament, and in the main event, we saw in Antonio Silva defeat Fyodor Emelianenko, an upset to some. Yeah, to some, but you know what? Bigfoot Silva, in addition to being an absolute giant of the division, this guy's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, big heavy hands, and he has one of the best teams surrounding him. Fedor Emelianenko doesn't have that big team. He's not at the, the larger end of the heavyweight scale, and it, that's, it just comes down to physics. You know, if you're bigger and stronger and you have the same skill set, chances are you're going to prevail. The big question, though, is what's next for Fedor Emelianenko? Mixed martial artist Fedor Emelianenko has shown his dominance in the sport by defeating numerous top-level competitors for nearly a decade. Then going back to the arm again. Oh, it's a now again going for the arm bar. Old man Choi taps out. Oh, With an impressive streak of dominating victories under his belt, the seemingly unstoppable Sambo practitioner had developed an aura of invincibility. However, the Russian enigma was definitively exposed for the first time in his career on June 26, 2010, against jiu-jitsu master Fabrizio Verdun. It looks like he was going to tap there. He's got his arm straight. Oh! He's tapping! He's tapping! Dip! Fedor! Losing for the first time! Fabrizio Verdun! The submission defeat sent shockwaves through the mixed martial arts community, and the fighting emperor's mystique was damaged. The Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix quarterfinal marked the return to the cage for Emelianenko. However, it would not be the performance reminiscent of his past. Matched up against the larger Antonio Bigfoot Silva, pundits would witness an uncharacteristic performance by the former Pride Heavyweight Champion. Oh, and he got caught with that counter, did Fedor. Love coming out of the nose of Fedor. My goodness, what a wow. flurry! And he mounted wow. him easily. Emelianenko in all kinds of trouble eating these hammer fists. Fedor looks defenseless now. Silva is absolutely manhandling, dominating Fedor Emelianenko. Referee Mergliotta has waved off the fight. They're stopping the fight. They've stopped this fight. Antonio Silva has won. The Russian appeared humble in defeat, as it was the first time he suffered back-to-back -back losses. Us as fighters, I, I think the majority of us probably figured that, that Fyodor would, would, would win the fight, but none of us thought that Bigfoot was going to be easy to beat in any way. And he showed exactly why he was the Elite XC champion, why he's a tough fight for anybody. 
and uh, very impressive uh, seeing him to go to submit uh, such a good fighter as, as Fyodor and even go for leg locks against a Sambo guy. Considering hanging up the gloves prior to his encounter with Fabrizio Verdun, now eliminated in the first round of the heavyweight Grand Prix tournament, the thought of retirement weighs heavy on Emelianenko's mind. Thank you very much for your love and support. Maybe it's the time to leave. Yes, maybe it's the last time. Maybe it's high time. Thanks God for everything. I've spent a great, beautiful, long sport life. Maybe it's God's will. Well, if this is the last time, you've been an incredible champion. The feather show everybody in 10 years, in 12 years, show everybody the best in the world. Just to have it two lost is, is I say, ah, Federer's not the same guy, but maybe he don't have a motivator. Maybe the Federer don't have a good camp. The depend the camp is very important. The camp. My hat is off to Federer. You know, he is still considered the best fighter to ever live in this sport here. He's done so much for the sport um, and for European athletes as well. You know, MMA fighters, and uh, I think he's you know all-time legend. And he's had no two two losses now in a row, but you know. I don't think he's going to quit now, you know. If he did, I would respect that. Despite the Russian's comments, those close to him, as well as Strikeforce CEO Scott Coker, feel the 34-year-old will continue on with his mixed martial arts career. You think uh, Fedor will retire? No, not at all. I think he's done. No. You seem all. almost certain of this. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you know how it is when the fight happens, it's emotional time, he's injured right now, but um, I don't see any... Uh, I don't see him retiring on a, a fight like this. Uh, I think people will see either Fedor fight for Doom rematch or they'll see Fedor fight Alistair depending on what the outcome of that event is. So you're still going to see some Fedor in some great fights and, uh, you know, he, I, I don't think he's done. The man who not long ago was considered to be the baddest man on the planet will now have to regroup and assess his options to determine his next move in the ever-evolving sport. We hope you enjoy all of the action coming up this weekend, including the Fighters event, which will be taking place from the Hershey Centre in Mississauga, Ontario. On behalf of everyone here at the Fight Network, Extreme Couture Toronto, he's John Ramdean, I'm John Pollock. Enjoy all of the action this coming weekend. Hook and an uppercut, McGinnis.